Hey guys, welcome to this channel. In this session, I am going to talk about Route 53. But before talking about Route 53, we have to understand what is DNS. So this is a basic level lecture, but at least it will help you to understand how actually DNS works. And this is something you have been using behind the scene every day, but you don't know about it exactly. So let's have a look. So a DNS is a domain name system and what it will do is that it will translate human friendly host name into the target server IP addresses. For example, when you type in your web browser www.google.com, it will in the end give you back an IP address and this is the IP address that your web browser will be able to access behind the scene and get some data back from Google. So the DNS is the backbone of the internet. It is a way for you to understand how to translate these URLs, these host names into IPs. So there is a hierarchical name structure for DNS. And the idea is that the, at the root, of www.google.com for example there is the dot com but then there is a example.com which is a bit more precise than www.example.com or api.example.com so all of these are going to be the hierarchy of your domain names next we need to explain bit of terminology regarding your dns so there is a domain registrar this is where you are going to register your domain names and it could be amazon route 53 or it could be godaddy or any other domain registrar you can find online then you have dns records and there are different types and we will have a look at them in detail in this session so it could be a quadruple a C name, NS, etc. etc. We will see those in detail in this session. The zone file which contains all the DNS records. So this is how to match these host names to IPs or addresses. Name servers is servers that will actually resolve the DNS queries. And we will have a look at them as well in this session. Top level domains which is .com, .us, .in, .gov, .org, etc, etc. Second level domain which is Amazon.com, Google.com. So you can see there are two words in between dots. And so if we take a look for example at this FQDN, so fully qualified domain name, we have HTTP API dot www dot example dot com okay so the last dr at the end is called the root and is the root of all the domains names then the dot com so dot com is your tld so that's your top level domain the example dot com is going to be your second level domain then we have www dot example dot com that's your subdomain, then api.www.example.com is your domain name type. Okay. The HTTP part of it is the protocol you want to use, and altogether we have the FQDN, which is the fully qualified domain name. So now that we know a little bit of terminology, let's have a look at how DNS works. So we have a web server and let's say for example that we have an IP, it's a public IP, could be an EC2 instance for example and the public IP is 9.10.11.12 and we want to able to access this using the example.com domain name. So we are going to register this example.com domain name on one our servers for the DNS but let's see 
how the computer your web browser can access it and can get that response so your web browser is going to want to access example.com and to do so it's going to ask its local dns server hey do you want do you know what example.com is now this local dns server is usually assigned and managed by your company or assigned by your internet service provider dynamically and if if the local dns server has never seen this query before what it is what it will going to do is first ask the root dns server managed by the icann and the icann organization and it's going to say hey do you know what's example.com which is the first server that's going to be asked and the root dns server is going to say i have never seen it but i know dot com so dot com is ns so it's an ns record named server and go see one two three four this public ip so this is saying to local dns hey i don't have this answer but i am getting you a little bit closer to your answer because i know the dot com domain and the dot com domain name server has this ip 1234 so the local dns service okay good now i am going to ask the top level domain so the dot com domain server at 1234 i am going to ask for the answer for my query so this is another domain managed by iana the iana and the example.com is going to be asked again to this dns server so do you know about example.com and the dns server is going to say hey i don't know about example i do know about example.com i don't know the answer to your query right away i don't know which record it is but there is a server called example.com that i know about which is at 5.6.7.8 that's public ip that you should ask the answer to your question so the local dns server is then going to go to our final server which is the sub level domain dns server and this is a server that is going to be managed by your domain registrar so it could be for example amazon route 53 and so on so the dns server is going to say hey do you know about example.com and the dns server will have an entry for example.com and so it will say hey yes of course i know example.com and it turns out that example.com i know that it's a it's a record and that's the results of it in the ip 9.10.11.12 so the dns server now knows the answer by recursively asking dns servers and finding the most specific one and then it says okay hey, yes i'm going to cache that answer right away because i want to be able to if someone is asking me again for example dot com i want to right away give them the answer so it's going to send back the answer into your web browser and your web browser now has the answer and using this ip address then is going to be able to access your web browser so this is how dns works so you have been using dns behind the scene all along all your life for example when you access www.google.com you are using dns or any website but now we see how the dns queries work so this is just some background knowledge because now we are going to go into root 53 and learn how to manage a dns server on our own so i hope you understand this concept you understand what is dns and all so now that we know what is dns and it's working now let's have a look at amazon route 53 so this is a highly available scalable and fully managed and authoritative dns 
what does authoritative means that means that the customer you can update the dns records so you have fully control over this dns so the idea is that you have your clients and they want to access your ec2 instance at the rate example.com but right now your ec2 instance only has a public ip therefore what's going to happen is that we are going to write some dns records into amazon route 53 into a host zone and when the client is asking for example.com then the route 53 service will be able to say hey you are looking for this ip 54.22.33.44 and then the client will be able to connect directly into your ec2 instance so route 53 is also a domain registrar so it will be able to register your own domain names there such as example.com and we will be doing this in the hands-on to allow us to get started with this service so we have the ability to check also the health of the resource within route 53 you will see this in the section and this is the only service in aws that will provide 100 percent availability sla finally what is it called route 53 well 53 is a reference to the traditional dns port used by dns services hence the name is route 53 so in route 53 you are going to define a bunch of dns records and the records define how you want to route traffic to a specific domain so each record is going to contain a lot of information such as the domain or the subdomain names such as example.com the record type and we'll see what type of record we have available to us for example it could be a or quadruple a then the value so the value of the records for example 12.34.56.78 the routing policy which is how a route 53 will respond to queries the ttl which is the amount of time the record is going to be cached at the dns resolver also called time to leave and then we have a lot of different supported dns record type in route 53 so we have the ones you must know is a quadruple a c name and ns so we will have a look at those in the hands on and the advanced records that you can set but we don't need to know from an exam perspective are all those one i just wrote right up here so let's learn about the important record types we need to know from an exam perspective so the a record is very simple it's a is to map a host name into an ip before ip so this is when you have for example example.com that will be directed into 1.2.3.4 okay great then we have quadruple a so this is the same idea as a but this time we are going to match our host name into an ipv6 address then we have a c name which is used to map a host name into another host name and then the target host name of course maybe an a or a quadruple a record and you cannot create c names in route 53 for the top nodes of a dns namespace or the zone apex and we will see this in a future lecture as well to understand how that's work for example you cannot create a c name for example.com but you can create c name record for www dot example dot com so we will see how we can deal with this in a future lecture so then finally ns ns is for name servers of the hosted zone they are the dns names or ip addresses of the servers that can respond to the dns queries for your hosted name and this will control how traffic is routed to our domains 
So let's have a look at what are hosted zones. So hosted zones are a container of records and they will be defined how to route traffic to a domain and its subdomain. So we have two types of hosted zone. We have the public of zones and the private hosted zones. So whenever you buy a public domain name, for example, mypublicdomain.com, this is public domain name and therefore we can create a public hosted zone and this public zone can answer the query. Hey, was the was the IP underlying IP of the domain name application one dot my public domain name dot com. But we also have private hosted zone, and these are for domain names that you they are not publicly available. They are private, and only you within your own virtual private cloud or VPC can resolve this URL. For example, application one dot company dot it internal. You may have seen this if you are working for a private company. They sometimes have URLs that you can only access within your corporative network. That's because this is a private URL. This is a private, and behind the scene there is a private DNS record. So for any hosted zone, you are going to create an AWS. You are going to pay 50 cents per month. So this is not free to use Route 53. And if you are to register a domain name, just like I will in the hands on, this will cost you a minimum of $12 per year. So, just so you know, this section is not free. So, publicly versus private hosted zones, just to understand. So, public hosted zone can be answered, can answer query from public clients. So when you web browser, for example, and say, hey, give me example.com and then it will returns an IP. On the other end, we have the private hosted zone. So this is from within your VPC, they live. And so they allow you to identify private resources with uh, private domain name. So for example, we have one EC2 instance that we want to identify with web app dot example dot internal we have another ec2 instance that we want to identify with api dot example dot internal and then we have a database we want to identify with database dot example dot internal in which case we are going to register a private hosted zone and then in case the first ec2 instance is requesting for api dot example dot internal then the private hosted zone has an answer for it which is the private ip 10.0.0.10 then the ec2 instance will connect to the second ec2 instance which may need to connect to database so it will say hey what is database dot example dot internal and the private hosted zone will say well this is this is the private ip and then the ec2 instance can connect directly into the database so the public hosted zone and the private hosted zone work the exactly same way but just the public hosted zone allows anyone from the internet to query your records so this is for your public records whereas a private hosted zone is only queried from within your private resources for example your vpc so that's it for this theory i hope you all are clear with this concept so i'll see you in the next lecture so if you found this video helpful then like and share this video to your friends thank you for watching bye and have a nice day